gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Alex Grubauer. Hello! Hey, there you go. Thanks, guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, I appreciate you guys being here. I've actually done stand-up for one person before. Yeah. Twice. Second time was the worst, because it was the same guy. Uh, my name is Alex Grubard, not Alex Rhubarb. Yeah, that kind of comes up a lot. Uh, a rhubarb is a vegetable, often baked into a pie. A grubard is a Jew, <laughs> often baked and or high. <laughs> my first name is Alex, short for alcoholics. Uh, my middle name is George, which everyone knows is slang for shrooms. Uh, I took shrooms pretty recently and I took the subway. Yikes. Yeah, I got on at government center, I got off underwater. I got into a fight with a dolphin named Officer O'Malley. Uh, it wasn't good. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I, my story begins in New York City back in the 80s when everyone belonged to a New York crime family. You know, and there were two types. There was a type where you were like, hey, if you mess with me, somebody from my family's gonna make sure you wake up in the river wearing concrete shoes. And then there was the other type that was like, hey, if you mess with me, somebody from my family is gonna start a business with you and then embezzle from it for years. <laughs> That's a threat. But I didn't really grow up in New York. My parents are divorced, both of them. What are the odds? Uh, <laughs> my parents got divorced when I was one year old. So we had a good run. <laughs> yeah. So I spent most of my childhood traveling back and forth between New York City, where my dad lived, and Massachusetts, where my mom knew my dad would never move to. <laughs> she was wicked smart. Uh, yeah. And yeah, my parents have both been divorced multiple times. My girlfriend's parents have been divorced multiple times, so good luck to us. The statistics show she's getting half of my shit. I just have no idea what she is gonna do with one Xbox controller. <laughs> Um, yes, I, uh, you guys are very sweet. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming to a third show. Uh, I'll tell you this, I, uh, I recently, uh, was in college. I actually dropped out of college at 18. I went back at 24 and I graduated at 29. Yeah, you don't have to, hey, you don't have to applaud. You're not my parents. Uh, did anyone here graduate college by the time they were 22, within four years? Oh, go fuck yourself. You think you're better than me? You are. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't even tell me your SAT scores. Good guy. I got a one. Uh, that's hard to do. They say you get 100 points for spelling your name right, but I wrote down Alex Rhubarb. I really mucked it up, I did. Uh, yeah, and people would ask me all sorts of questions. They would be like, oh, Alex, you know, do, what was it like being a 29-year-old college kid? You can't be a 29-year-old college kid. I was a college adult, okay? <laughs> Whenever a freshman came up to me and asked directions to their next class, I would give them a silver dollar like I was their grandparents. <laughs> Kids would lean into me in class. Alex, your age is clearly greater than 21. Would you buy me beer? I would tell them, no, I will not buy you beer. Let me teach you how to distill gin. Because <laughs> remember, if you give a kid a beer, he's gonna be drunk for an hour. But if you teach a kid how to distill gin, he'll be dead by 8 a.m. Yeah, it's graded on a curve. Uh, yeah, I have a very serious drinking problem. Uh, I'm rude. That's a problem. You guys know the phrase, an Irish goodbye? It's where you're at a party, you get really drunk, and you leave without saying goodbye. I don't do that. I do the Jewish goodbye. I go to a party, I get really drunk, then I say goodbye to every single person at the party. And then I stay. Rudest thing you can do to anybody. 
hey, uh, man, I do not want to be here with you anymore, but I have nowhere to go. Why don't you come here? I'll tell you about this dream I had. It's fun for everybody. Uh, I was not a very good student in college. I was like a C, see me after class kind of student. Uh, I didn't know, I wasn't very good. I never knew what to take. I took a business class one time. I did so poorly I had to file for bankruptcy. I took a painting class. They suspended me for bringing in a paintball gun to a nude model session. I took a science class. I did so badly I was thinking about becoming religious. You want me to tell it again? All right. Uh, I took a public speaking course thinking, I'm a comedian. This is going to be an easy A. Here's the thing. It was a night course. I had to skip every class to do this. The weirdest. Uh, and people would ask all the time, like, oh, what was it like? What was it like going back to college? It was distracting. It was very distracting. Everybody there is in their teens and 20s. A girl walked into my class one time sucking on a lollipop. I failed the course immediately. <laughs> And it was a busy campus. Everybody's always yelling at you and stuff. I was walking through campus this one time. This guy stopped me. He was like, do you believe in a higher power? I was like, yes, I totally believe in exponents. Uh, I don't understand numbers. They work in mysterious ways. I was the worst math student in the world. As a kid, they used to give me word problems. I wouldn't even understand that word problems were math. I would end up reading them like they were short stories. Interpreting them. They're so dramatic. Alice has five apples. Alice gives two apples to Bobby. How many apples does Alice have now? I would be like, uh, how many apples do any of us have? What do apples represent? I bet it's love. That's what I think. Love? Turns out it was three. Who knew? But I had, to, I had to go back to college. I, got, uh, I had all these terrible manual labor jobs and stuff. I used to work at this really fancy coffee shop, serving coffee to really fancy people. And I noticed something about really fancy people. You know what fancy people get with their coffee? Spit. Uh, yeah. I spit in their coffee. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you. I, uh, do you guys get me? Uh, <laughs> I know that I do stand up the way an American goes to a foreign country and speaks English at people. <laughs> and I'm loud. Why do Americans do that? You never see a Mexican guy on the Freedom Trail. Don't get it, stop! They'll bomb you! <laughs> Doesn't happen. I'm terrible with languages. Like, my family, we're Jewish, but we're culturally Jewish, which is where you're like, I've never read the Torah because I own a television. Uh, <laughs> But my family was like, oh my God, we forgot to send you to Hebrew school. And when I was 12 years old, they were like, you need to learn Hebrew immediately so that you can get bar mitzvahed. And I was like, I've been failing middle school Spanish for three years, so it won't happen. In college, I had to take a foreign language. I chose Italian, a language spoken in one country that is not even a UN Security Council member. It's kind of a useless dying language, yeah. In my experience, Italian is only around so that people from New Jersey can be proud of being from New Jersey. Here's what my Italian professor would do. She would call on me when I was not raising my hand. That is very impolite. Que molto impoleto. Uh, if there are any teachers out there and you call on me and I am not raising my hand, I will pull my phone out in front of you and go on ratemyprofessor.com. One star, no chili peppers for you. But she would pick someone randomly, start speaking to them in Italian. Ciao, mi chiamo Marcella, come te chiami? I'd be like, listen, lady, I'm gonna drop out again, all right? I don't understand. I don't understand you! Why am I yelling? The microphone in my computer doesn't work very well, and this is an online class! Yeah. Uh, I used to also work at this place here in Massachusetts in high school. I worked at a place called American Video Store. If you've never worked at a video store before, you never will. Uh, yeah, that is a lost train. It's like being an alchemist or a smithy or something. And it's too bad, that was the best job in the world. There was only one rule at American Video Store. Do not laugh in anyone's face when they rent a porno. Hardest rule in the world to follow. I laugh so hard I will never forget the name of the first porno I ever rented to somebody. It was Booty Duty 3. 
If I wrote that movie, the first scene would have been a police chief leaning on a desk yelling at a detective, Johnson, you're on booty duty. <laughs> now don't look what happened the last two times happened again. There were so many good titles in American Video. Face Jam, they were great. Uh, I think my favorite title had to be Crack Attack. Because Crack Attack is what happens when there's no one on booty duty. It's very serious. How many people smoke cigarettes? The answer is 45 million in America. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know, I've been laid off a bunch of jobs. That sucks getting laid off, right, you know? Because getting laid off sounds like it should be a good thing. Getting laid is great. Getting off, also awesome. <laughs> getting laid off while you're at work should be fantastic. <laughs> but it just means you can't come anymore. Does anyone have a, a birthday within the past year? Uh, and everyone else is off the grid? Okay. I actually have the same birthday as my mom, different year. Uh, but it's true. Yeah, I was born on my mom's birthday. And growing up, my mom would always tell me, oh, Alex, you are the best birthday present I ever got. Which is really sweet. So now I never get her anything. Uh, <laughs> I never know how to like act surprised getting a gift like in the right way. You ever get a gift from somebody and the way it's wrapped, it's obviously a book, and then you open it and it's a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you can keep all the presents this year. Uh, I don't need any. Okay, does anyone know any closers? <laughs> I'll tell you this. I've lived in uh, in Philly, New Jersey, New York, Boston, places where everyone is extremely friendly. Uh, <laughs> No, we're all very rude here in the Northeast, but I think it bonds us together. I was in a park one time, eating a sandwich. This old lady came up to me. She was like, you better put that sandwich away, otherwise the squirrels are gonna come up and bother you. And I was like, are you a squirrel? Because you're bothering me. You guys, I'm Alex Shubar, thank you so much, good night. <laughs>